Combining cable cars and high voltage transmission lines is a fantastic idea. This idea leverages on the infrastructure of one system to benefit another. Seeing how my previous video about transmission lines serving a different purpose is such a big hit, let's explore more into this topic. This is a cable car. How they transport people is that the lines on the cable car are actually moving. The lines are the one transporting the cable cars like the conveyor belt carrying plates of sushi to you. In this case, transmission lines don't actually move. They don't like to move because they are transmission lines. They stay where they are. They are static. And that's why we should look at them more like train tracks. This is actually not a far-fetched idea. All we need is just someone to say yes. Ancient astronaut theorists say yes. We have had trains where the cabins run on tracks that are on the ground. Electricity source coming from the top and at the bottom, train tracks act as the ground or neutral to complete the electrical loop. Basically, the electric sink. Then we have trams where the tracks are incorporated into roads. It is widely accepted now, but imagine the resistance and the pushback for this kind of proposal, man. The only reason they are able to do this is because democracy wasn't so strong. Do you know how dangerous train tracks are? Putting them on tar roads? Are you insane? Like, how are people gonna jaywalk safely? Have you had some safety considerations? But it's running and functioning now, and we don't see any safety protests. Okay, moving up. We have monorails. Basically, train tracks in the sky, goddammit. In the middle of the f***ing air. Train tracks in the air? Doesn't sound so insane now, does it, huh? There is no overhead power lines as the electric source are incorporated into the tracks itself. Then the rail acts as the neutral or the electric sink. Now let's take it another level higher. This is a dangle train. Upside down monorail, whatever you want to call it. Where the tracks and the support for the train is just on top and the train cabins are just dangling and suspended. This is not new. Like, look at this. It's basically a monorail thingy hanging. Does it look stupid? Maybe. But does it work? It fucking does. Functionality is beauty. The tracks are on top of the train. So back to the topic. How do we use transmission power lines as a transportation asset? The first question is, is it feasible? Can the power line carry weight? The answer, it definitely can. Structural design. Most towers are actually robust enough to support both the weight of the transmission line and the cable car system. Safety. We need to ensure that the high voltage lines do not interfere with cable cars or cabins. Adequate insulation and safety measures must be in place to protect the passengers. And also compatibility. We need to ensure that the technology for both the systems can be seamlessly integrated. This includes electrical systems, control mechanisms, and also monitoring systems. Okay, the juicy parts. Let's look at the benefits. Like, whoa! Oh! This is the good part. The shared infrastructure. By using the same towers for both cable cars and transmission lines, the cost of building separate infrastructure is reduced significantly. This also reduces environmental impact and land use. Combining this system minimizes the need for additional land. This preserves natural habitats and reduces deforestation or land disruption. It also has less visual pollution. Having a single set of towers is less visually intrusive than having separate structures for each. Talk about a synergy, man. Cable cars can be designed to take advantage of the electricity from the high voltage lines, potentially lowering operational costs. Like, this doesn't have to be a widespread thing where we're not expecting each transmission line must come with together some cable cars dangling over here and there. But if there's a river crossing somewhere and it so happens to have a transmission line across it, it is worth it to have a look. So okay, actual concerns. Actual concerns about this kind of design? The failure impact. A failure in one system could potentially affect the other. For example, a structure failure in the tower could disrupt both the electric supply and cable car operations. Basically, too many eggs in one basket. If the cable car has a failure, then it might affect the tower. If the tower doesn't have electricity because of another reason, then it affects the cable car as well. There are also some small electrocution risk, like high voltage lines poses a significant risk of electrocution. Ensuring the safety of passengers on cable cars passing near these lines is 
paramount. But let's be real, how many electrical related injuries are there actually and then compared to some other stuff? Like, look at the contacts. Public concerns. Yeah, of course. Public concerns is always a big one and everyone needs to respect that at all times and not just when it's convenient to do so. The big one is regulatory hurdles. Yep, that's the democracy in action. The combined system will need to navigate through the regulatory framework of both the energy and the transportation sector. Two different ministries. Think about the licensing and compliance. If you have worked in the construction and to put up buildings and know the difficulty of complying to get water, get electrification, and also the fire department and wastewater department, holy shit. Okay, forget it. Let's just take the train overhead electrical network supply, then tap it into power homes and other stuff. You're watching the Funsi channel. Do, 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 do.